Good morning, good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing? Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for watching. And God bless you for watching. It is well with you. Today, I want to talk about um, what it means to be sanctified. What it means to be sanctified. Salvation is the beginning of the Christian life. After a person turns from their sins and accepts Jesus Christ as their Savior, they have now entered into a new adventure and a spirit-filled existence. It is also the beginning of a process known as sanctification. Once the Holy Spirit becomes the guidance force for a believer, it begins to convict and transforms the individual. This process of change is known as sanctification. Through sanctification, God makes someone more holy, less sinful, and more prepared for, um, to spend eternal in heaven. Praise the Lord. What does sanctification mean? What does sanctification mean? Sanctification is the result of having the Holy Spirit indwelling in the believer. It can only be happened after a sinner has repented of the sins and accepted the love and offer of forgiveness from Jesus Christ. The definition of sanctify is to make holy, set apart as sacred, consecrate, to purify or free from sin, to impart religious sanctions to, render legitimate or binding to entitle to reverence or respect. To make productive of or um, conducive to spiritual blessing. <clears throat> In the Christian faith, this process of being made holy is the eternal transformation of becoming more like Jesus. Praise the Lord. As God incarnate, made human, Jesus Christ lived a perfect life, completely aligned with the will of the Father. All other people, by contrast, were born into sin and do not know how to live perfectly in the will of God. Even believers who have been saved from living under the condemnation and judgment brought on by sinful thoughts and actions, still face temptations, make mistakes, and struggle with the sinful part of their natures. To shape each individual to be less earthly and more heavenly, the Holy Spirit and cages in a process of conviction and guidance. Over time, if the believer is willing to be molded, that process will change the person from the inside out. Praise the Lord. The New Testament has a great deal to say about sanctification. These verses include, but are not limited to, from the book of um, 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 21, it says, Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable, used, set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse um, 11, and such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, 
you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of our God. Hallelujah. In Romans uh, chapter 6, verse 6, we know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. Philippians 1 verse 6, And I am sure of this, that he who began a work, good work, in our um, in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Hebrew 12 verse 10, For they disciplined us for a short time, as it seems, best of them, but he disciplines us for our good, that we may share his holiness. John 15 verse 1 to 4, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Praise the Lord. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Praise the Lord. So, how are we sanctified? How are we sanctified? Sanctification is a process through which the Holy Spirit changes a person. One of the methods used in the Bible to describe the process is that of the potter and the clay. Hallelujah. God is the potter creating each person, imbuing them with breath, personality, and everything that makes him or her um, unique. He also makes them more like him once they choose to follow Jesus. Praise the Lord. The person is the clay in this metaphor, being shaped for this life and the next by the will of God, first by the process of being created and then through the workings of the Holy Spirit. Because he created all things, God tries to perfect those who are willing to be perfect, to be what he intended rather than the sinful beings humans choose to be. Praise the Lord. In Ephesians 2 verse 10 it says, For we are his um, workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. The Holy Spirit, one of the aspects of God's Nature is the aspect of him that lives within the believer and shapes that person. Before the, he is ascended to heaven, Jesus promised the disciples they would receive help from heaven to recall his teaching, to be comforted, and to be shaped to be more holy. Praise the Lord. In John 14, verse 15 to 17, it says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, you, you know him, for he dwells with you, and he will be in you. Praise the Lord. It is difficult for sinful men to keep the commandments perfectly, so the Holy Spirit convicts Christians when, the, when they sin and encourages them when they do what is right. 
this process of conviction, encouragement, and transformation makes each person more like the person uh, God wants them to be, more holy and more like Jesus. Praise the Lord. So why do we need sanctification? Why do we need sanctification? Just because someone is saved, it does not mean that individual is useful for work in the kingdom of God. Some Christians continue to pursue their own goals and ambitions. Others struggle with baleful sins and temptations. These trials do not make them any less saved, but it does mean there is still work to be done. So they can be used for God's purposes rather than their own. Paul encouraged his disciple Timothy to, co to continue pursuing righteousness to be useful to the Lord. Now, in a great house, there are not only vessels of good gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honorable use, some for dishonorable. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for the honorable use, set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 20 to 21. Praise the Lord. Being a part of the family of God means working for its good and God's glory. But without sanctification and renewal, no one can be as effective and eat as they could be. God bless.